Good evening and welcome to the May 16th meeting of the Lake Forest City Council. Will the clerk please call the roll? Alderman James Cowie. Alderman. How about Alderman. Mayor? You know what? The first one I'm supposed to read, and I blow that first one. Honor Honorable James Cowie. Here. Oh, she's never going to let me do this again. I can see that. Alderman Novit. Here. Alderman Waldick. Here. Alderman Moore. Here. Alderman Pantaleon. Here. Alderman Morsh. Here. Alderman Schoenheider. Absent. Alderman Palmer. Here. Alderman Edelman. Here. We have eight <clears throat> present. Mayor, we have a quorum. Thank you, Bob. Uh, will you please join me in a pledge of allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Our first order of business this evening is reports of city officers, first being comments by mayor. I do have a resolution that I'd like to read this evening is in regard to the resolution opposing the reduction of the local government distributive fund payments to the city of Lake Forest. And for those of you who are not familiar, the uh, state of Illinois is certainly in a, a very uh, poor fiscal state right now. And they are one attempt they're trying to do is to get more money back into their own coffers is to uh, take the money that the uh, cities get, which is 10% of the state income tax and bring it back into their own uh, pockets. And we would, that would be a loss if they take the full amount from Lake Forest of about $450,000 a year. So every community, therefore, and the uh, entire state of Illinois is certainly concerned about this and has uh, petition the state not to do that because it puts a big hole in all of our budgets and, and also in light of the fact that they just increased the state income tax by 66 percent. So I'd like to read a resolution uh, opposing the proposed reduction of local government distributive funds by the state of Illinois. Whereas the city of Lake Forest is a home rule municipality located in Lake County, Illinois. Whereas the city provides direct frontline services to its residents and businesses, including police and fire protection, water and sewer service, snow removal, road maintenance, traffic safety, and other core city services. Whereas city residents and businesses have paid income taxes to the state since 1969 to support both the state budget and the city budget, which taxes are collected by the state and which local shares distributed monthly to the city via the Local Government Distributive Fund, or LGDF. Whereas one of the primary principles of establishing the LGDF was the state agreed to act as the collection agency for the revenue on behalf of the local governments, and in exchange, local governments agreed not to impose their own local income tax. Whereas since the inception of the LGDF, the city has received and relied upon these funds to provide services to its taxpaying residents and businesses, Whereas the effects of the national economy include a reduction of several of the key revenue sources of the city, and in response, the city has worked diligently to manage the impact of city residents and businesses by reducing staffing levels and attempt to preserve core services and programs while simultaneously reducing city expenditures. Whereas the recent 66% state income tax increase resulted in substantial new revenues to the state but added significant financial burdens to city residents and businesses. However, none of the new taxes are being distributed to Illinois municipalities. And whereas the state contemplated 30% reductions to LGDF distributed funds during its fiscal year 2011 budget process, which would have resulted in the loss of over $450,000 annually to the city budget, the city officials have been made aware that the state is now considering some proposals that could entirely eliminate the LGDF distributions, which could result in the loss of approximately 1.4 million annually to the city budget, causing services to potentially be further reduced or requiring a major tax increase to city residents and businesses who have contributed to LGDF since 1969 and are now paying 66% higher income taxes and have paid their fair share of taxes. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Mayor and City Council of the City of Lake Forest as follows, that the provision of the City of Lake Forest direct frontline services are at risk <coughs> with this potential loss of income tax revenue, and therefore the City opposes the reduction of local government distributive fund payments to the City. I ask for a motion for approval. So moved. Second. 
All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. That motion <coughs> carries. Our next item on the agenda this evening is a resolution establishing a property and public lands committee. Uh, there is a resolution. I'm not going to read that entire resolution. It is on page 25 of your packet. But essentially, this is a committee more or less a combining a number of other committees that we've had, some that have been dormant now for a little while. We had a Barra committee that is somewhat dormant, given uh, the property is now up for sale. We've had the uh, Laurel Avenue committee. We have a number of other different committees. And basically, this is one that will look at all of the lands that we own, the buildings and our surplus properties, and put a, a group together of not more than um, well, we're not more than five aldermen, but three to five, and a number of other individuals that will, will sit on that committee and look at these properties and give direction back to the city council. So I ask for uh, a resolution um, accepting that as a new uh, committee of the council and a uh, recommendation for approval. Mr. Mayor, can I make one comment? Um, in section uh, 3C, it says interact with the Park and Recreation Board, Gorton Commission, Alloa Commission, and other boards. It would be nice if we could uh, indicate the housing trust there because it's pr pretty integral to some of the sure. property. Just adding in the housing trust into the resolution so that it's named and clear that. I don't see any problem with that. Any just, other comments? Just a nope. recommendation. If we can make that think that's resolution. okay? Yes. Okay. Great. Yeah. I'll make a motion to approve. Yes, change. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Our next item on the agenda is uh, just a, pretty much an FYI. We have an appointment of Thompson Ford to the Police Pension Board. Uh, this was a vacancy that we've had, and we're just finishing our fulfillments to our boards and commissions, and Thompson Ford has agreed to step up and fill that position. I know he is well qualified to do so. I ask for a recommendation for approval of his appointment. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries. Uh, the next item on the agenda this evening is comments by city manager, Bob Kiley, and city clerk this evening. <laughs> yeah, I gotta switch hats here real fast. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. Before I get to the published agenda, I did just want to note uh, for the record that this past weekend, despite the horrible weather, the uh, police department held their first annual bike rodeo and there was over 100 kids and their families there despite the inclement weather. So it was a great turnout. Everybody had a good time. Uh, other city departments and organizations helped participate in it. And so we want to thank, send our thanks out to the police department for helping arrange this. And uh, I think because it was such a success that we'll be looking at doing this in the future. Uh, as an annual event, so congratulations to them. The uh, next item on the agenda is uh, an item that the council has seen historically at this time as the weather does start to get a little nicer and we're planning ahead for concerts in Market Square. And this evening I'd like to ask that uh, Dan Duell, our program uh, super manager from uh, Parks and Rec come forward and uh, brief the council about the uh, upcoming events in Market Square. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'll be brief. Uh, we are here to seek approval of the waiving of the city support service expenses for the uh, 2011 Summer in the Square concert series. A little background, uh, we've got eight concerts lined up for this year, and uh, they'll start June 16th and go through August 4th. They're on Thursday nights uh, from 6.30 to 8.30. These are free concerts for the public. And uh, we've got a, a very nice lineup uh, for this year. Um, it does require a little bit, actually, it's a fairly minimal amount of city services. The streets and sanitation department drops off uh, some barricades so that we can uh, barricade off the uh, parking area in Market Square. And then we also have some additional trash barrels and so forth. And then the next day on Friday morning, they come and pick up those items as well. So we are uh, seeking. Uh, uh, approval of, of waiving those uh, service expenses. And I might add, this is just a requirement under your uh, special events ordinance and policy that the city has in place. That's why they're coming together, they're coming before you this evening formally for asking the waiving of the fees. A motion to approve. 
Second. <clears throat> uh, roll call vote, please. Alderman Novit. Here. I mean, approved, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Alderman Waldick. Aye. Alderman Moore. Aye. Alderman Pendleon. Aye. Alderman Morsh. Aye. Alderman Palmer. Aye. Alderman Edmund. Aye. We have eight yeas, zero nays. Motion passes. <laughs> Struggling there a little bit. I know, I know. <laughs> you can tell I don't do this very often. <laughs> it's good to have people. <laughs> I hope to see you out there. Great. Thank you. Our next item on the agenda this evening is council committee reports. Our first being the finance committee, Alderman Pandeleon. Uh, we did talk about this at the Finance Committee about the approval of naming rights policy for parks and recreation facilities and my understanding is we're going to table this this evening. Uh, staff is going to go back and rework the resolution and then bring it back to us at, a, at a, uh, another date. Is that correct, Bob? Correct. Do you need a motion to table? We already did that. I don't think so. Finance. Just as long as we have the direction, we'll reflect it in minutes. I really don't have anything to add. I, I think our previous conversation was okay. comprehensive. Thanks. Right. So our next item on the agenda is the Housing Trust, Alderman Morsh. Uh, very briefly, we had a meeting uh, last week and uh, uh, discussed, among other things, the um, legal agreements with the Lake County Partners that we discussed at the City Council meeting. Those are directed back to the City Attorney for further uh, review based on the uh, housing trust review and then uh, uh, the city manager will have to approve those as well so we made good progress on all those topics thank you thank you alderman morsh our next item is the public works committee alderman Novit. and uh, we have four items that are up for discussion today and ramesh is going to get a workout because he's carrying the uh, the load on a lot of these uh, so as he's walking up, the first item that we're going to be discussing is the award of a contract for the Park Avenue and uh, Greenleaf Avenue water main replacement project. And if you're ready. Uh, thank, thank you, uh, Alderman Novit, Mayor, members, <coughs> members of the Council. Uh, today in front of you, as part of our capital improvement program, uh, we go through uh, every year in August, September on all our water main replacement projects. We uh, talk to the water and sewer section, we look at uh, the age of the pipe, look at the number of water main breaks, and then we come up with a, a five-year list of all our water main projects. So in this year, we had this Park Avenue and Greenleaf, and we also look at our uh, annual resurfacing program so that we, we like to tie in all together so that we can get the water main installed and then pave the street so that we are not coming back three years later. So we look at a comprehensive, uh, from a comprehensive list, we look at all those three items and then try to put a list together. Uh, this year, we have uh, for Park Avenue and Greenleaf, Park Avenue is between McKinley and uh, uh, Willow. We've got a six inch cast iron water main. Our city standard is an eight inch duct iron pipe. Uh, so we are trying to replace that six inch with an eight inch pipe. Uh, we took the bids out. Uh, most of the work, again, on, on this particular uh, water main is, is all going to be augured because of we've got some mature trees in the parkway and we like to. Uh, that's less intrusive compared to an open excavation trench, so we're going to try to auger the water main, try to keep the disturbance to the, to the minimum we can. Uh, we received bids, we got you know, six, five, five bidders we got, and R. Mancini was the lowest bidder on this job. They did work before uh, with the city, they did a lot of private work. Uh, they've been always like a sub to other contractors just for augering. Uh, so today uh, we checked out the references with them and uh, the, the total price, including their contingency amount, is within our budgeted amount. So uh, we are recommending awarding the contract for Park Avenue and Greenleaf Water Main to a RMNC. Ramesh, should we combine these three topics? They're all to the low bid, and um, unless I counsel Jackson, then maybe spend more time talking about the special service should district since that's a little more. Uh, I have questions on the SSC. Yeah, that's what I thought. Is maybe we'd separate <coughs> that one out, talk about that, and. But that's oh. fine. So I don't Does that work, Ken, if we did a motion for That's those fine. three and we'll so award to the low bidder and then talk about four separately? Yeah, and we'll keep Ramesh talking that way also. <laughs> so if, if there are no questions on item one, why can, don't we... Can I ask just one question on this one? Sure. And that is, yeah. how much more expensive 
is auguring an open trench excavation. Presumably it's more expensive, right? Right. Auguring typically is, is more expensive compared to an open trench. Uh, so what, what are we talking about dollars and cents? Dollar typically on a, uh, you know, I did have the prices. Last year we did an open trench on Old Elm Road. Uh, it was around 80 bucks a ton for eight inch, uh, 80 bucks per foot for an 8-inch pipe. Augering this year, we got around 90. So, oh, okay. Uh, but well, having 10%. said that, 10%. 10%, but again, because there was a lot of competition, but typically it's, uh, it's anywhere between like 20 to 30%. Great. Uh, so, thank yeah. you. And it, what's the timing of the project? Uh, uh, if once we award the contract, uh, May 16th, we're looking at middle June to start. Uh, we already notified the residents before we all usually send a letter in sp early spring. We tell them that there's a project coming forward. And then right before, two weeks before the start of construction, we again send them the letter saying that the project is going to start on such a date and this is the contractor and who the contact person is. Okay. Well, if you're ready for item two, it would be the award of uh, Lake Forest share of the 2011 Joint Sewer Lining Project contract. To uh, Institute of Farm. Yeah, this uh, lining project over the years we have always done uh, with other municipalities. This year we're going with seven municipalities and uh, Institute Farm prices are very comparable to what we got before, so uh, we are recommending with uh, Institute Farm. And again, lining is similar to the augering, it's less intrusive. It's uh, uh, just just to sh tell you guys, it's more of a uh, trying to get a pipe within a pipe so that you're not basically digging a sanitary sewer and then you're trying to line the pipe so that it, it's, it sticks to the old pipe and then creates a new pipe. And the capacity of the new pipe doesn't reduce that much compared to the old pipe and it's a new technology and we've been using it and very successful over the years. Any questions? Yeah, no, sorry. No, no. Sure. Um, when you line a, a main main, what about the taps that come into it, the laterals? I mean, how, how do you deal with the lining going by the junction? Right. So uh, before we line, we, we notify the residents that we are going to line. So what the contractor usually does, they'll TV the first existing line, and they have this process where they note where all the services are coming in, exactly they'll, uh, within the length. And once they line, there's a uh, what they call is a saw machine comes later on and it taps, cuts the service lines in the liner so that the services can get. Uh, you mean they send the saw down the line pipe yes. and then they cut it up. They can just stop right at the junction. Yes. So w w when they TV it, they. <laughs> yes. Okay. I, I can send you uh, volumes no, of those videos. I'll take your word for it. I was just curious. But yeah, that, that, that's, how, uh, that's how they do. Because I was thinking if we're lining them to keep them from leaking, the weakest point is going to be those junctions. R right. And, and what we have seen in the pipes too, like you know, between the joints, a lot of these tree roots come in. Yeah. So before they even line it, they'll have a cutter which will cut down all the roots. And then they'll clean the pipe, and then they'll send the liner in. Beautiful. Okay, any, any other questions on item two? Could I have that done in my front yard? We might have to add that onto the project. Not, no, I'm talking about just no, I, it's I've a point of information for, oh, for yes. the people. The I mean, they do every, like service laterals. I mean, in our neighborhood, probably once a month, I see somebody getting a new uh, service put in because their yeah. pipes have gone bad. And if this is an alternative, it's a pretty ugly process when you have to do it. Right. right. Yes, you can service the line. Uh, the service lines can be lined too. Yeah. We, we recommend anytime a new. Uh, a permit does come up and when they have to replace, we give them the option. You can replace in kind, digging, or you can line it if that is more economical. Is it usually more economical or is uh, it about the same? It's it all depends on the length of service. But I, right, but well, typically I think landscape. lining is much, much better because you know, you're not uh, landscaping, you're not touching any of that. Right. Okay, so. any other questions on item two? <laughs> on to item three, which would be the award of contract for the Northwestern Avenue and that would be from Alden Lane North uh, for the storm sewer in the Monticello Circle sanitary, sanitary sewer project. Uh, again, uh, we, we, when we went into doing this project, these are two small projects, and we thought, like, you know, if we combine, we'll get some better uh, bid results. Uh, we did get some, but it's not what we expected. It did go over budget, but looking at uh, this particular project, because it's two separate projects, one is storm sewer, one is sanitary, and half the work also involves paving, so, you know, we did not get what we got uh, favorable, but having said that, Camp Manila and Sons have worked with us before in the past, and, and uh, we feel that these prices, you know, do reflect uh, uh, what those current market is. And also there are savings from other projects, so we hope that we can continue this project, which is the next item will be that uh, SSA, since this ties into that SSA project. Okay. 
And any questions on item three? None? Um, if we're gonna take this as a group, would this be a roll call vote or? It's gonna be a roll call mm -hmm. vote anyway, so we okay, just do need we have a motion. A motion. A second. We need a second. Do we have a motion? We got a motion. I got a motion. We need a second. Second. To take all three. Okay, and roll call vote. Alderman Novit. Aye. Alderman Waldeck. Aye. Alderman Moore. Aye. Alderman Penelian. Aye. Alderman Morsh. Aye. Alderman Palmer. Aye. Alderman Edelman. Aye. We have seven yeas, no nays. Motion passes. Okay, and and item four then, uh, which would be uh, relating to the uh, consideration of an ordinance establishing the Lake Forest Special Service Area number 39 for the Monticello Circle Sanitary Sewer System. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, this is a special service area pro project which we started uh, initiating last time sometime in the fall. Uh, as part of our uh, resurfacing program, we, we, came, we found out that Monticello Circle was going to be repaved in this fiscal year. Uh, typically, we look at any of the old projects where there is a, a sewer or a curb or any other infrastructure to be put in. We give the residents a chance to get that work done before we start paving. So we approached the four residents of Monticello who are on septic to see if they're interested. Uh, and they were all interested. We did some preliminary drawings. We met with them. We provided the cost. And then we started the special service area process. This is the second step, what we call is the third step in the special service area process. The first process was to establish an ordinance to propose a special service area, which was approved by the council on February 7th. That uh, ordinance also sets a public hearing date, which was on March 7th. Uh, and then the council uh, he tries to hear any public comments on this project. We did not get any comments, so the project, uh, the public hearing was closed. And this is the third step where we're trying to establish the SSA uh, 39, which is for the Monticello sanitary sewer. And this will then dictate with you passing the project uh, on the bid, we're going to go into the motion of then construction. Once the construction is done, we're going to see the final cost, and then we're going to then uh, do the what we call is a special service area levy. Uh, this particular SSA is done based on equalized assessed valuation, so uh, it's based on the taxes they pay on, on their property. A line item on the tax bill will say SSA 39, and it will be proportionately uh, done every year for 10 years. So, uh, so this is like the third step for that SSA, and once we do the project, uh, they're paying for the sanitary sewer. Once they pay for it, we install it, approve it, city takes over the maintenance responsibility of it. Yeah, and any questions from council? Mike? The, so the, the tenure SSA is for the $30,000 right. for that's, those four houses? Right, that's okay. the estimate. In the ordinance it says with a maximum annual levy, annual levy of 38000 Right. Why would the annual levy be so high if you're just amortizing 30000 No, 30000 is just a budget amount. We, we have to give the residents a budget amount to start the process. Yeah. So what we do after the construction is done, uh, if you look at the previous contract which we awarded, it came to around 32000 So we just like to have some uh, leeway in the field that if something does go wrong, that, there is a, that we won't go beyond 38000 That's just a upper cap, per se, but that's not the final amount. The final amount will be determined after all the work is done and we get a final invoice, that will determine what the final amount is. But we hope to keep it below 30 or 31,000 actually. Yeah, but you don't mean annual levy of 38,000. You mean a total levy of 38,000. Right, exactly. Okay, right. so there's a typo. And you also our uh, legal counselor for today, Marla, did advise me that there's some few sentences she's gonna change in terms of that. Uh, we do give an option to the homeowners. Some people don't like to have this uh, item and your taxes that we give them the prepayment option. <coughs> Once the project is done, a final invoice is built, we give them 30 days if you want to pay your share up front. And then typically we do like a special tax, but since this is based on EAV, we don't have to do a amendment to the ordinance. We just leave it as it is, but she was gonna make some changes to that. I just wanted to bring that up. Uh, I two David? quick questions, sorry. Um, who's connecting the sewer to the homes? Right. What we do is we, we put in the main line pipe and we will go with a service stub up to the property line and then we stop there. Okay. So the homeowners will then take it from there to the house. Okay. Um, and the other question was, I read this a couple times, it looks like the resurfacing would normally cost 100000 but laying the sewer pipe in is an extra thirty. Right. So for, if, if they decided not to get the sewer and they only resurface the street, what would the bill be? 
It'll be a, uh, we, we would have included that in our annual resurfacing program, it so it would be around 100,000. Okay. That was our estimate, right? Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, and any further questions? Uh, do we have a motion to grant first reading? And, and wave first reading. And wave first, first reading. So moved. Second. All those in. Is this a roll call? Yeah, or is this waving, a roll call? No, waving first reading is, is a voice. Is roll call. Okay. Right. Waving first reading is a voice call. Post what? Okay. Nice job, Mr. Clerk. All those in favor, say aye. No, wait, I can't do it. Aye. 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 Right. a thousand tonight. <laughs> uh, all those opposed? Uh, um, now you got me all confused here. Uh, all right. There was a Tom Morse who made the uh, second. Yeah. Did you second? Yes. Okay. Yes. We'll slow down a little bit. Thank you. All in favor? Then it was aye. aye. No, we, okay. we, we did that. We now did we that. have a motion to approve. Except okay. I don't think Tom voted. This is a roll call. Okay. Do we have a motion to approve? And a uh, motion for final approval, roll call vote. Motion for final approval. Second. Alderman Novit? Aye. Alderman Waldeck? Aye. Alderman Moore? Aye. Aye. Alderman Pendelian? Aye. Alderman Morsch? Aye. Alderman Palmer? Aye. Alderman Edelman? Aye. We have seven ayes, no nays, motion passes. And final comment, uh, Ramesh? Congratulations on new title with the city. Oh, thank you. Appreciate that. Thanks. And that's it for public works. Thank you, Alderman Nova. You have one more senior resource commission as well. Any well, new report? Really no report at this point, uh, short of there was um, at least some discussion with the housing trust as far as alternatives for assisted rental. Um, again, there'll be further discussions going forward. Okay. Really no. Nothing beyond. Thank you. The uh, next item is the Transportation Safety Enhancement Committee. Uh, nothing new to report in that regard. Our next item is comments by council members. Any comments? Additional comments? No. Our next item, therefore, is opportunity for public to address the city council on non agenda items. And I know we did have some folks here. If you want to come on up to the podium here and just state your name and your address for the viewing public, we appreciate it. My name is uh, John M. Lynch, and uh, I uh, live at uh, 550 Rosemary Road, and this is my colleague. Kelsey Colasa, 112 North Avenue. And um, today uh, we would like to address you um, regarding plastic bag, uh, plastic and paper bag uh, usage in our city. Um, Kelsey and I are both juniors at uh, Lake Forest High School. I'm a senior. Oh, she, <laughs> she is a senior at Lake Forest High School. Um, I should know that. Um, but uh, we are both um, uh, taking the same class called uh, AP Environmental Science. And as part of a second semester project, uh, we, are, we have to choose each member of the class has to choose a partner and then decide on some sort of community service project. And so ours is, uh, like I aforementioned, uh, trying to reduce paper and plastic bag usage in the city. And um, tonight we were hoping to uh, discuss with you, kind of share with you and present some of our solutions that we think might be feasible for the city of Lake Forest to implement. And uh, possibly you could get back to us with uh, what you're doing to try to um, reduce paper and plastic bag usage and maybe kind of give us some feedback on if these solutions are at all feasible. And um, so, uh, so, Kelsey, tonight. Yeah, to um, I'd just like to start off with, um, sharing what kind of sparked our interest in this topic of reducing our plastic bag usage and the impact it does have on our, on our environment. And um, one of the most shocking statistics that we came across was that in the United States every year, the United States alone, 100 billion plastic bags are used every year. And that comes to a total of 3,200 plastic bags each second in the United States. And it's just, it's an overwhelming number. And the sad fact is that less than 1% of these plastic bags are even recycled. And so the 99% that aren't recycled and that are probably improperly disposed of, um, those bags are having a really negative impact on our environment. And it's also responsible for the death of 1 million seabirds every year and 100,000 mammals. Um, it, it, like like uh, my colleague said, it's a truly startling statistic. It's almost mind-boggling. You try not to. You, it doesn't even you know. It doesn't even seem believable. Uh, but our facts are uh, facts are and uh, sources are legitimate. Um, and 
Uh, I'm here to discuss kind of our first topic of solution, um, which is, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but um, I believe that uh, Lake Forest, uh, the city of Lake Forest, uh, does not provide a uh, recycling program for local businesses and that it's up to them to kind of determine their own recycling businesses and their, um, they don't receive um, uh, any sort of uh, guidance or aid. And so I was hoping that um, possibly we could uh, think of some solutions to try to uh, in integrate a, um, an, an affordable and a very um, uh, economical uh, recycling program for the businesses because I, uh, I, I've heard that um, from my uh, AP environmental science teacher and from others that uh, communities adjacent to ours implement recycling programs uh, through the city that uh, makes them more affordable for local businesses and increases uh, pay, uh, plastic bag recycling and uh, paper bag recycling and we think that these would both um, improve the uh, improve uh, or work to uh, create kind of a sustainable environment for disposing of paper and plastic bags and that's just kind of one of our first solutions mm -hmm. and, uh, and our second thing um, after taking this this course it kind of opened my eyes to how little I really knew about what like impact just going to the grocery store and accepting that plastic bag has and Jack and I both really believe that um, it really starts with education to the community, um, and we would really appreciate any help. We've already started talking to other stores. Um, we have gone to Fresh Market, and um, they are working with us to um, take on a new program to kind of uh, inform the community of reducing their plastic bag usage and bringing in their, re their reusable bags. Um, and so we're working with them, and we just really believe that the community of Lake Forest in particular isn't really aware of the impact we're having and we feel that if we just kind of made an effort to inform people that it is very likely that we could make a difference so and um, and then kind of as one of our final solutions that I'll touch upon, um, uh, Kelsey and I uh, via the internet ordered a few uh, reusable bags and we're beginning to sell them at our, um, at our high school and it's kind of a custom design that we did. I'll put a picture of the design on the overhead camera. Um, and uh, as, you, as you can see on the, uh, on the right it says uh, save the seabirds and then on the, uh, on the left on the back of the bag it says, I refuse to use plastic bags because Americans alone consume 3,200 shopping bags every second and 1%, less than 1% are recycled. And uh, like uh, my colleague mentioned before, that it, the effect to the marine life is uh, completely uh, disastrous. And um, so we created these bags and we have 100 bags currently in stock. Uh, I apologize, I don't have one with me at the moment, but um, we do have them at the high school and we're starting to sell them. And um, the reason I bring this up is because we we're hoping that maybe we could uh, give uh, the city council the license to use our design and use our bags and kind of even give them away or sell them at local events. Not only would this generate revenue, but it would spread awareness about the uh, issues concerning plastic bags. And um, we are hoping that uh, in addition to selling the school that with your help we could kind of, you know, get these plastic bags out toward a wider audience. So that, um, that's kind of my solution. Um, so that sums it up. We also, I'm not really sure who we would give this to, but we do have contact information. Um, we, we would be really interested in hearing what the council feels about some of our proposals. Um, we just, this is something that Jack and I both feel very strongly about. Um, and I think that it would be really nice for Lake Forest to kind of take the lead on this, um, especially because environmentalism is becoming such a, it's becoming a more important part of our society and I think that Lake Forest could really do a lot with it. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you both for coming in and uh, you missed earlier at the Finance Committee, we're expanding our recycling program in town with adding uh, carts now instead of bins. So it would expand our collection and uh, as you may know that um, I was the head of the last environmental committee and it's something that Bob and I have talked about. We need to put it back together again. We lost some of our aldermen. So we are looking at um, reforming that committee and if either one of you, well, you're gonna be graduating, so <laughs> maybe Jack, uh, if you wanna be involved next year, uh, this school year is almost over, but uh, we can try to get our committee back together and we look at those, those issues. We have looked at, that last committee did look at trying to provide um, uh, services for businesses and it's not 
as simple as just saying we're going to do it. There are some contractual issues, obviously, with, with vendors that already are uh, providing those services and the like. And then there's, there's issues on public-private side and who, who does what and how we do it. But uh, we've, we have looked at that. I think we're going to go pick that back up again. And certainly you're give us an impetus to uh, go back and uh, restudy a lot of those issues. So we appreciate your coming in this evening. I have a question for, for our new uh, head of public works. <coughs> and on Kelsey, this subject. as uh, Mr. Thomas comes forward, he'd be the individual to give your contact information to. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you all. Thank, Thank you. you. Just a very quick question. The, <coughs> The plastic bags that we get as the default option, unless we ask for paper, those are recyclable. But uh, can they be? Those are a number four plastic, and yes, they're recyclable. And uh, we can just put them right in the bin with every other thing we get. You can. The the place we take our recyclables to encourages us, if residents want to, to take them back to the store. Um, the stores typically have got access to better markets where they can reuse those bags. Um, but they, they can be placed in the bins and we can recycle them. Yes, absolutely. But the key is that there is that triangle on the bag that lists the number one through five or seven. Um, then we'll recycle it. Thank you. Any other uh, opportunity for public this evening? Yes. Mm -hmm. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the new alderman. Thank you. Um, my name is Rami Lopad. I live at 410 East Woodland Road. And I think that's a great idea. Jewel recycles those bags. And I've, as in dress shops, I've watched as those garment bags are put in the wastebasket. And I've had that conversation with some of the vendors in town. And they don't know what to do with the bags. So bravo, keep going. Maybe you can work out something with Jewel to take all the bags from the vendors and coordinate through them. It's a great idea. Um, I'm here tonight to, um, to um, say that I'm, I'm uh, very appreciative um, and welcome the, I, the fact that the city of Lake Forest did not proceed with option number two for the South Beach Access Road in Forest Park. Um, the Committee of the Whole endorsed a better option, and um, I'm very glad that it did. Um, it's a better option, but it is not yet optimized. And I would like to um, put forth, put, put some recommendations to you and um, hope that you can follow them through in some sort of way with your committee structure. Um, I've, I've not had a lot of time. I've jotted these down, so forgive me. But um, as you know, I've become a stickler for, for um, for looking for coordination between the plans and projects that are going on in Forest Park. They need better coordination. Some of these will have to do with, some of my suggestions here might have to do with the Forest Park Master Plan. Um, some might have to do with the Bluff Restoration Plan that the Parks Department is doing, and some might have to do with the Public Works Committee. But what I would like to, um, to see is that um, the City Council try to create a mitigation plan for the ravine soils and vegetation, the preservation of that vegetation, and doing no harm to that vegetation. What you've got there in that ravine is, is ecologically very, very special. It's one of the best ravine bluffs that I've seen in this town and, and, and my work in Highland Park as well. I would like to um, know that the standards and recommendations that the City of Lake Forest puts in front of its homeowners in the Ravine and Bluff brochure that you publish is followed by the City of Lake Forest. The same recommendations should hold for our city as hold for our residents. In that brochure, for example, it says even a layer of topsoil cr creates changes to ravine ecology. There should be a replanting plan implemented before the winter storms damage the bluff and the ravine slopes. There, there I have seen a plan. It was flashed on a screen. It was mostly green blobs, in my opinion. Um, so it was impossible to see. 
um, I would like to see the, the, the understory, the trees, the shrubs, all of that are considered. I'd like to see that the, um, the plants that are out there, I'd like some research done, I'd be happy to help, on whether those plants can be rescued now before they go dormant. They will be dormant by the time your construction starts. You will not be able to tell where the plants are. So if they can be rescued, that needs to be, and, I, and I'm not sure they can. Um, they may just be destroyed. A maintenance program for the drainage under the retention wall that is planned. Your, our engineers have said that that's one of the trickiest things uh, to drain that properly. That's when they were talking about a, um, uh, um, what do you call those walls? Um, steel wall. A uh, careful review of the design, the rock face that is chosen to be sympathetic. It should be his sympathetic with historic park standards. Applying decoration to the ravine side to protect the view of the ravine from the concrete slab lookout, which is one of the most tranquil areas of the park. A review of why a guardrail, ugh, is needed. And um, whether, whether its design will be, will be um, sympathetic with the history of the park. Um, or whether it will just be plain old regular metal with a neon stripe at the end. Our calculations being taken into account for the Forest Park Project Board proposal to expand the, the park's uh, parking lot and also drain the park. As you know, the Forest Park Project Board, the concept plan that was accepted by the City Council, has Lake Road drainage going east across the park and then south to the parking lot. Is that being coordinated? Is that being taken into account? As we, as we compute the amount of drainage that the South Beach Access Road needs to handle. Where are the storm suitors going to be placed? Where will they drain to? What innovative, this is probably one of the most important things, what innovative techniques will be used to capture water, hold it, and filter it prior to running that warm and dirty water straight into Lake Michigan? What's happening to prevent further erosion at the south end of that South Beach Access Road? I've seen Mr. Magnus out there but I don't know what we're going to do to um, solve the erosion that's currently occurring. Is there a formal legal opinion that the city can self-permit this project rather than go to the county stormwater permit process for wetlands? What will be the design of the curbs and gutters on Lake Road and the South Beach Access Road? Will they conform with historic standards? How will engineers prevent overtopping of the curb in major rainstorms like, we're, like what washed out the road? Can the road be narrowed, even six inches, a foot, just to offer more shoulder to the ravine and less harm to the plants and the hydrology? How far away is the wall from the road? How high and long is the road? We don't, need, we don't know yet because the, the um, charts have been too small to take a look at. All that's happened in a month. We have another month of, of design development. Um, I'm hoping that we could bring in some ecological consultants such as um, Conservation Design Forum or Open Lands. I would very much like to see the technical subcommittee continue. Mr. Kiley, you've um, written to me that there will be no further discussion on the South Beach Access Road at the Public Works Committee, but um, I would like to see that, that technical su subcommittee report out either to the Public Works Committee or the Environmental Committee that you just mentioned, Mr. Mayor. I'm not sure what that does. Um, and, um, and continue, continue to have open meetings report back to the public. Public information process on this has been successful. Um, the public came forward, you responded. We're very glad that you did, and we'd like to see that continue. Thank you. Thank you, thanks for your comments. I know that the former Alderman John Luby and uh, the rest of that committee spent an extensive amount of time on the on that project and put a lot of effort into it and I know they brought in a lot of good people to work on it. It's certainly not complete complete but I have a lot of confidence certainly in Ramesh and engineering and all the work that they're doing. So we're, we, we know you'll be involved. We know that uh, you, will have in, you will have information and we'll continue to give you the information as we continue to, to finalize the final plans before they go out to bid. Any other uh, public? Yes. I'm Neva Ganun. I live at 650 Northmore, and I welcome those of you I haven't seen here before. 
and look forward to working with you. Um, I wanted to bring to your attention the city computer website is still not consistent. Uh, obviously, I've been using it a lot because I'm here. <laughs> and I have discovered that some meetings and boards and commissions are mentioned in one era, or one area you would expect to find them, and they're not in another. So it's kind of not quite tweaked properly, and I would hope that you could get the webmaster, whoever that may be, that poor soul, to go through the thing and, for instance, mention all the city council meetings in the same place. Um, what happens is you're directed to one area and the information is not there, and therefore I have in the past missed a board or commission meeting because I didn't know what was going on and I've shown up for ones that were canceled. So let's try to get all on the same page here because right now this is eff effectively prohibiting full public participation. And in light of the size of the audience here, we could use some more residents coming to these meetings and perhaps if they could find the information more easily, they would do that. I also wanted to urge you to with regard to the ravine plant issue, that you pay attention to what Rami Lopat has brought to you tonight, because I've looked at those plants in the, in the seminary ravine, which is the one at the south end of uh, Forest Park, and that is an absolutely spectacular carpet of plant material, the likes of which I've never seen before. And I've been traipsing around these ravines for decades. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. We will check our dates. I see Susan there. She's smiling. We're going to check our dates to make sure that there, our website is correct. Appreciate your comments. Any other public this evening? No, if not, we'll move on to the uh, next item on the agenda, which is the consent agenda. We do have two items out of the agenda this evening. One is a resolution of appreciation for Michael Silvestri for 22 years of service. Michael, uh, probably known most for his work with the Public Works uh, part of our, our city and uh, the Snow Command. Uh, Michael did a fantastic job for 22 years, and we're... We're, um, I know he's not going to be here this evening, so I'm not going to read the resolution, but we thank Michael for all of, his, all of his efforts and dedication to the city for the last 22 years. And the next item we have is approval of the minutes from the May 2, 2011 regular and second meetings. Um, so I'd entertain motions for both of those. I move that the consent agenda be approved. Session. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> Motion carries. Our next item on the agenda this evening is ordinances. We have uh, new business. First being an authorization to award a contract for Route 60 landscape maintenance. And I understand uh, our Peter Gordon, the city forester, is here this evening to present. Good evening, Mayor Cowie, members of City Council. I'm here tonight before you to ask that you waive the bidding process for the Route 60 landscaping and award uh, the contract to Applied Ecological Services as a sole vendor. Uh, this evening I provided you information in your packet in regards to the Route 60 project. I just want to take a moment to touch base on a couple things um, with you. Uh, this particular project uh, is almost approaching 10 years uh, as far as when it started and to where we are today. Uh, in 2002, the Plan Commission uh, got together to do a comprehensive plan for uh, Route 60 uh, that was based on a lot of the new development that was occurring. Uh, subsequently, since that time, in 2006, the Route 60 Beautification Committee was formed with a number of homeowners associations, uh, golf courses, Conway uh, partners, uh, and the office complex, in addition to city staff. Uh, they developed a plan based on the comprehensive plan that was originally put forth by the Plan Commission. Uh, that plan was then vetted to uh, the Building Review Board in 2008, approved by the Building Review Board, and subsequently approved by the state in 2009. Uh, 
Uh, that plan consisted of the planting of the medians, uh, which are currently there, uh, and as part of the tollway project, in addition to the planting of the parkways. Uh, and unfortunately to uh, the city and to all the stakeholders were, who were involved, uh, the plan just never took off the way it was intended. Uh, partially uh, to blame, we think, was obviously the process in which some of this was installed. Uh, it was unfortunately installed by the state and their contractors and didn't have a lot of oversight by the city. Uh, in addition to the fact that contractors that applied the seed and certainly the plant material weren't specializing in this process. So the city, along with uh, several of the homeowner association board presidents, uh, the Conway office group, uh, went back to the drawing board along with uh, Alderman Morsh to look at the plan. Uh, we came back to the conclusion that it was indeed an appropriate plan for the area. Uh, unfortunately, it was the way that it was installed. Subsequently, we just recently met uh, with a new plan applied to us by Applied Ecological Services uh, to continue the native planting uh, at a uh, smaller scale when it comes to height. Uh, in addition to uh, adding plugs and seed, uh, we feel that we can maintain certainly an aesthetically appropriate plan for that corridor and certainly follow the intentions of the Plan Commission in 2002. So that's kind of an overview. Uh, in addition to the fact that just this past week we received uh, support from uh, almost all the homeowners associations that were in attendance to that meeting and the Civic Beautification Board uh, for this plan. So uh, at that time I'd like to answer any questions you might have. I, I would just add that we um, had great cooperation and Cardi is here from the Conway uh, farms homeowners group, but uh, from both Stonebridge and Conway Farms and others, uh, Academy Woods had all had input into the plan. Um, and Peter, I thank you for your support and your help on this, and Mary as well. Um, there was a, a good consensus, and, and Cardi can jump in on this, but uh, Route 60 is clearly one of the major entrances to Lake Forest. Um, if you were out there last summer, it didn't look very good, and uh, that's kind of what started these meetings. Um, when I was on the Plan Commission years ago, we did have a lot of discussion about that. And when the development occurred, uh, there was actually funds set aside to make sure that we would uh, improve that kind of entry to Lake Forest and, and create a little bit more sense of place and consistency uh, with the rest of the community. I think we're on our way to doing that. So um, great outcome, and thank you very much. Two questions. Uh, one. That the contracts for a three-year period, is there a guarantee period that extends beyond the three years? Question number two is who snow plows Route 60, the city or the state? And if it's the city, do we make a concerted effort not to throw snow laden with salt up on the median? And if it's not the city, if it's the state, I guess that's more than two questions. Does the, <laughs> state, <laughs> does the state make an effort here not to throw salt laden no. snow up on the median because that can't help the vegetation. Survive. No, and I'd be happy to answer all First those. To Certainly, to uh, it. it's not the city, and the state does throw salt when they do plow yeah. it. Uh, <laughs> so I guess that's the number one uh, question right there is when they plow it. Um, unfortunately, uh, to answer your question, a majority of the snow does roll into those medians. Uh, it's just a spot for the snow to go. As a result, uh, the salt also goes into those medians as, medians as well. Uh, the material is as salt tolerant as can be. Um, the good and the bad of it is that these uh, islands are actually inverted so that water actually goes to the center. Uh, and so that helps to kind of dilute some of that salt that's in there. Uh, the drawback is that we'd rather have it crusted so that the salt kind of rolls back off onto the curbs. But unfortunately, it wasn't designed that way for a number of reasons. Uh, to answer your other question, there is a three-year monitoring point. So as far as the guarantee of the plant material goes, uh, that's somewhat subjective based on why the plants may have died. Uh, the consultants that we've used recognize the fact that it is very heavily salted, very heavily heavy traveled. Uh, so emissions are an issue as well, pollution are an issue as well. Uh, and we've worked together to try to come up with the best plant material based on uh, you know, the project at hand. Certainly this is probably some of the worst environmental conditions you could ask plants to. Uh, handle, but we feel confident certainly with this group uh, along with the city staff that we can make a go at this. Um, unfortunately, the original implementation was just poor, and um, you know, we, uh, we felt bad about it. And I know that the community as a whole uh, didn't care for the planting, and uh, 
we've got certainly the buy-in from the homeowner associations and uh, from our contractor that uh, it'll be much better this time. But Peter, isn't there a good likelihood that uh, any plant material other than seaweed and coral will survive out there on that particular median and that we're ultimately it'll have to be paver blocks and some non-living kind of landscape design? No, I don't think so. I think unfortunately what has happened over the last two years is everybody is looking at other medians in the general vicinity, whether it be Vernon Hills, Bannockburn, Lincolnshire, and they're looking at the types of plant materials that they've used. Uh, those are irrigated. They're not on high curbs. Uh, you know, those have more of an ornamental planting, sometimes daylilies, roses, things like that. Uh, here we have ability to kind of pick seed, pick plants that have historically done well and perhaps a more of a saline uh, environment. And so um, is it going to look like your backyard garden? Absolutely not. Are we going to try to pick tried and true plants that handle this type of environment? We're certainly going to do our best. Um, you know, there's still going to be a fair amount of weeding. Uh, the other thing that I should mention in the development of any of these types of projects, especially when we go native, uh, the community, the city as well, needs to have some patience. Uh, you know, planting bluegrass is certainly different than planting a prairie. Uh, and so, um, you know, the plants we've chosen, we're certainly uh, confident, as is our contractor, will handle the salt. Thanks. And going with it, is there any plan in winter just to uh, maybe shield? the uh, medians uh, for a few years just to allow the plants to establish themselves? Uh, we're going to blanket the planting in the seed originally. Um, unfortunately, uh, as you may have seen with some of the other shielding that we do around town, uh, once the snow ends up hitting that, it kind of becomes ratty and kind of falls apart. Uh, certainly the snow plow uh, drivers are for the tollway um, and DOT go relatively quickly and as a result the snow flies pretty quickly so I'm not sure we can construct anything like that. Um, so I don't know if that would be feasible. Uh, we can certainly look at anti-desiccants and soil gels that certainly help in reducing that type of stuff. So from a chemical standpoint, we can look at some chemical treatments uh, in addition to putting things like gypsum down in the springtime to help try to dilute that. Because, okay, yeah, I mean, we've all seen, uh, you know, in some areas, they're kind of like <clears throat> burlap or some type of uh, yeah. material that's put up to at least attempt to shield the plants. It works well in environments that don't really receive a lot of snow throw. Your mailbox has obviously never been hit by one of the city's snow plows, so. <laughs> but Mr. Kiley's has. Yeah. <laughs> I've got yeah. two questions mm -hmm. for you. I'm sorry. No. no. Um, number one, just so I can understand, the, the, it says total project cost $87,000 for a three year contract, but we're looking only at 2012. Is this 87 a year or? No, this is a total of 87 for the, con for the plantings, the plant material, and then there's a three-year monitoring fee okay. uh, that's broken out uh, so for three years. The monitoring fee, what that's going to do is it's going to provide us information to all the shareholders to let us know how we're doing. It's going to kind of give us a gauge to let us know where we're at with our plant material, uh, our survivability, certainly the warranty that was just mentioned for the first year, year and a half. Uh, and then it'll allow us to um, better manage that, whether we need more weed control, whether we need, we need more water. Uh, so basically it's $80,000 for uh, the whole planting. Now, what you haven't seen and what came out of this board uh, is that the planting of the right-of-ways or the, the parkways, the state parkways, uh, currently you're focused on the medians that exist. This will also capture those parkways that uh, border the north and the south sides of more of the native areas. It's not going to incorporate the Brunswick's that have more of a formal planting, uh, but it will incorporate more of the native areas, whether it be Stonebridge, Amberley, the Bucher property, um, and then part of Academy as well. And so um, that $87,000 co covers all that. I think it's also important for the public to know that this is from impact fees. Uh, so this isn't from the city's budget. This is from impact fees that were generated from all those developments that took place. Second question is, uh, um, why the no bid? Normally there's only, there's so many landscapers in town. Uh, sometimes I, I know uh, Michael Thomas has no bid situations because only one person met the specs or bid. Um, but I'm sure that would come up later. Sure. No, I, I think that's a great question. I think what it was is that uh, the group got together. 
we invited all the landscapers to each representing community uh, and said, you know, what is our goal here? And Applied Ecological Services uh, became the spokesman. Uh, the city has used them. Uh, they've been low bid on our projects before. Uh, Conway Office Park has used them. Academy has used them. A number of these organizations have used them. Uh, and I think the consensus in this, this group of people um, couldn't agree on whether we should go forward with this plan, but now because of the contractor, completely agree that if we're going to make this work, uh, that this is the group that can help us make this work. In addition to the fact that um, it's almost June, timing is of the essence, and so uh, we just met last week, as a matter of fact. Um, we're probably looking at maybe a fall planting if we don't move on this in the next four to five weeks. Um, unfortunately, the weather will dictate if we can go forward with this project. Thanks. Any other questions for Peter? Um, so the, the, the seating was done last year and didn't take and now it needs to be redone. Do I understand that correctly? Uh, the seating was done in 2009. Okay. Uh, and so uh, it's very hot. The city didn't see the seed mix. We provided the matrix for them. Uh, the seeding was done, and then uh, with the mowing, um, I'm sorry, with the seeding, there's an, uh, a small amount of time that needs to be given to the seed so it can germinate. Prairie seed normally takes a little bit longer to get established. As part of this agreement, the state was to stop maintaining these medians uh, and allow the city to do it. Unbeknownst to us, they came in and mowed twice, which probably reverted back all the progress that was made uh, in the seeding, and so uh, we're entering our second summer here. Uh, as far as the original seating goes. So I guess my question is, is if, if it's your contention that the original seating work wasn't done properly, um, what is there any kind of recourse back to you know, the original contractor? If there's been two years that have gone by, you probably you know don't that's, have that. But. That's really a touchy subject. I mean, it takes a while for that to establish. Um, because of the matrix of the seed uh, and because the invasives were so aggressive, uh, the quadrets that we formulated to do a, a study of the plants, um, there could have been 5%. We just weren't in that same quadrat where we were sampling from. Um, so I think it would be hard to go back to them, uh, not given the warranty, uh, and not given the, um, I guess, uh, um, survivability we were looking for. Peter, it sounds like you almost should put up some no mow signs here on the median so that the state doesn't come along and mow the new We have uh, drafted letters to them, and unfortunately, um, they, they mowed twice, unbeknownst to the city. So uh, we will, again, formulate those letters, and we'll even place a phone call this time. We do, you know, we put up little bumps everywhere for skateboarders. <laughs> Maybe put stakes in the ground or something every so often. For uh, yeah, something needs to be done. And they're, they're looking for less maintenance, so this should certainly help them. Any other questions for Peter? If not, we'll entertain a motion for approval. So moved. Second. Uh, roll call vote, please. Alderman Novich. Aye. Alderman Moldek. Aye. Alderman Moore. Aye. Alderman Pandelian. Aye. Alderman Morsh. Aye. Alderman Palmer. Aye. Alderman Aiden. Aye. Aye. We have seven yeas, no nays. Pass. Thank you, Bob. Our next item under new business is a resolution adopting the intergovernmental service agreement between the city of Lake Forest and the village of Lake Bluff, presented by city manager Bob Kiley. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Members of the council, including your packet starting on page 58, is an agreement that some of you probably will recall that you've seen in the past. The most recent update was in 2008. Uh, when this agreement was updated between the village of Lake Bluff and the city of Lake Forest. Starting about a year ago, though, with the recession and some of the other impacts on some of the service um, agreements or service aspects of this, we agreed to come together and revisit the agreement and update it. Uh, primarily, there's three areas that uh, have been modified from the 2008 uh, contract. And they, the first and Probably most significant uh, changes had to do in community development with the uh, building inspection and plan review services. Um, the uh, old agreement had a floor of 45,000 uh, to a maximum of 90,000, 
and uh, the new agreement here because of the uh, drop in activity levels in the in the uh, village of Lake Bluff has been lowered to 30,000 and um, uh, the ceiling uh, uh, has stayed at the uh, at the same amount the other language that was added in here uh, came from the city and uh, Kathy Cerniak because there was an issue with respect to reinspections and that sometimes there would be a lengthy period of time between initial inspections or second inspections and we kept going back and forth and we wanted to add in there that uh, the there is a certain reinspection fee that the city can charge uh, if we're required to come back time and time again also uh, the um, uh, the language with respect to some of the plan review uh, fees had not been previously in there and were updated as well. With respect to PROYA services, the, um, there was in past agreements a formula for calculating out uh, the cost, but over the last couple of years, and the council recalls some discussion during the budget season that uh, really this has gone from 137,000 two years ago to about 101,000 last year, down now to uh, 62,500. Also, as a part of this, um, there has been some changes to the number of Lake Bluff representatives on Croya. They went from two representatives to one, and uh, one of the uh, tasks of the Croya board going forward is what does this do in terms of the level of service that we're going to provide, since they're providing approximately 50 percent of the resources that they were two years ago. Uh, and then the final uh, change has to do in uh, the um, uh, fire um, section uh, F under ambulance services. And uh, the way that the old agreement read, uh, there was the charge per call, but at the very end of it, we, uh, we capped it at no more than 180, or I'm sorry, more, no more than $1,865 per call because under the way that the old agreement was written, if Lake Bluff reduced its number of calls, it in theory could have had one call worth, worth $186,000. Wow. And that was never the intent, clearly. And so this really tries to uh, clarify the language that says it is the number of calls times $1,865 per call. So those are the, uh, the significant changes. There was a couple of other sections that were just taken out because they were no longer applicable after a couple of years. But uh, staff would recommend that uh, this be approved. It does, uh, it is retroactive to May 1, and the Village of Lake Bluff has this on their agenda <coughs> for next year. I'd be happy to answer any questions that anybody might have with respect to the agreement. I have a question regarding the costs on the, uh, for development charges. Um, two questions, uh, are they, do they reflect fully loaded costs or incremental costs? And number two, at any point, would they justify, would they, would they uh, um, result in a need to hire? And at which point would the total fees cover that hire? Um, let me answer the second part first, uh, and then uh, I might ask uh, Kathy Cerniak to also come forward. Um, no, uh, with respect to the need of hire, we have language in here and actually put it in in 2008 that basically said that if there is a increase in demand that we had to go out, then we have the right to engage an outside service to hire uh, or to cover those services that would be required by that new development in Lake Bluff and pass those costs on to them. Uh, with respect to whether it's fully loaded, I know that uh, when we did the cost of service study a couple of years ago, we had included overhead charges, and so those are the numbers that I think are reflected Oops. in here. I'll make a motion to approve the agreement with Lake Bluff. Second. Uh, roll call vote, please. Is this roll call or voice? Okay. Uh, Alderman Novit? Aye. Alderman Waldeck? Aye. Alderman Moore? Aye. Alderman Penelian? Aye. Alderman Morsh? Aye. Alderman Palmer? Aye. Alderman Edelman? Aye. Seven yeas, no nays. We motion approves. Thank you, Bob. Any other additional items for discussion this evening? No, hearing none, I'd entertain a motion for adjournment. So moved. All in favor? Second. Second. Alderman Novak. All in favor? Got that one. <laughs> um, Slow down. Aye. 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 Thank you. Aye. Meeting is adjourned. This guy's got to be a little quicker. Though. Come on.